Good morning. Welcome. I'm Loretta Micho, Director of Information Services for the Workers' Health and Safety Center. Today we are hosting our sixth webinar in a series we're calling Confronting COVID-19. Those of you working from home uh, during this crisis may also be experiencing pain and strain associated with uh, dealing with a makeshift workstation. We all need to get up and, and move uh, when we've been sitting at these workstations for any length of time for sure. Um, beyond this though, what are the basics you need to know uh, so that the workstation is a better fit for you? To answer this question, we've invited two ergonomists, Trevor Shell and Dwayne Fuchs from the Occupational Health Clinic for Ontario Workers, also known as OCAL. For those of you who don't know, OCAL and the Workers' Health and Safety Centre operate uh, respectively as the only clinics and training centre designated by the Ontario government in our province's health and safety system. Both organizations serve all workplaces, all workplace parties, in all sectors of the economy. How our organizations work together? Well, that could be the subject of another webinar. But suffice to say, we are mutually supportive Many of the great tools that OCAL has created for joint health and safety committees to do their work are embedded in our training uh, session. So Trevor, I'll turn it over to you. Yep. Thank you very much, Loretta. So good morning, everyone. And uh, again, my name is Trevor Shell. I'm an ergonomist with the Occupational Health Clinics for Ontario Workers, or OCAL. And I've been asked today to speak about ergonomic tips for temporary home workers. So to begin with, we need to look at what is the ideal sitting posture. We want to ensure that our body is in what we call a neutral position. Well, what is neutral? Well, basically it means our feet flat on the floor, knees at a 90 degree angle, the angle between our lower back and our hips, 90 degrees, everything nice and straight. Our elbows at a 90 degree angle, our wrists straight, that they're not bent forward or downwards. And of course, our neck facing nice and straight, looking straight ahead. Now, if you have a proper desk at home, uh, then set it up accordingly to ergonomic principles. By proper, this means that all the required equipment is there, you know, including a high adjustable keyboard tray, high adjustable monitor, external keyboard, external mouse, uh, what you would expect to see in a proper office environment. However, most of us don't have uh, the proper equipment at home. And so likely you're using a laptop on a desk or your kitchen table. Um, and you know, you're probably aware after you know, the number of weeks that we're into this, that uh, you're starting to make, could be experiencing some aches and pain uh, in different parts of your body. Ideally, when using a, a laptop, you should have an external keyboard and mouse and monitor uh, with the laptop serving itself only as the hard drive. For your work area, you want to find a suitable location to set up your workspace. Make sure it's dedicated if possible. If it's not possible, set it up and take it down at the, each, at the uh, end of each day and start of each day. By doing this, it gives you the ability to know you're done working. If the computer's always sitting on the table, always where you can see it, chances are you're gonna be tempted to actually keep working, keep going back to it. We need to make sure, especially during these times, that we have that mental health break that we're giving ourselves a chance to actually stop working and take time for the family. Uh, it's also important to take into account the amount of light present you want to make sure that there's plenty of light, uh, natural if possible, and also pick a spot that has limited noise or distractions. For example, being set up at the kitchen uh, table when uh, your family's trying to make lunch, for example, isn't as always the most conducive uh, place to actually try and get work done. You want to make sure the work surface itself is hard, stable, and flat. It should also be large enough to fit the required equipment that you have. 
And you want to make sure that there's space beneath it for leg placement. So examples, leg, table, counter, folding table. Uh, even an ironing board can be used as a work surface. It's height adjustable. You can bring it up and down uh, to get in a comfortable spot. It's stable and it's large enough to house your equipment. Your chair, well, to begin with, you want to locate as many different types of chairs within your house as possible to compare which one would actually best suit you. Of course, an adjustable office chair is the best. However, not a lot of us have office chairs at home. So you want to make sure that whatever chair you're using has a stable uh, base with a backrest. Do not use an exercise ball or a stool. You need that backrest support to help keep your back nice and straight. Uh, the height of the chair should try and adhere to the joint angles as much as possible. So keeping your knees at 90 degrees, your feet flat on the floor. Uh, you should also try and get your angles at or slightly above the surface that you're working at. If the chair is too low for the work surface, uh, you can place a pillow or cushion stack, a you know, pile of towels, etc., uh, on the seat to raise your body up. If the chair is too high, it can cause your feet to dangle. This can actually cause a pressure point on the underside of your leg, cutting out blood flow and nerve supply. So basically, your legs start falling asleep on you. So the way to overcome this is to use a books, a uh, box, crate, a pop case, once again, a stack of towels to help, help elevate your feet to get that 90 degree angle. If the depth of the seat is too large, uh, you can use a towel, pillow uh, between the back and the backrest. This will actually move you forward on the, uh, on the seat. When we sit and have the edge of the seat pinching at the back of our leg, once again, that cuts off blood flow and nerve supply. At the same time, because we're getting that irritating pinching at the back of the leg, it actually causes us to sort of sl unconsciously slide forward in our seat. And as a result, we adopt a slouching posture. So make sure we have that proper space and no pinching between the front of the chair and our back of our leg actually helps to improve our posture and our blood flow. For your monitor, if you're using a laptop, the ideal answer is to have an external monitor that's height adjustable to make sure you're getting that at the proper height. Ideally, the top of the monitor should be level with seated eye height. If you don't have an external monitor, uh, you can raise the laptop if you have an external keyboard and mouse to placing a book, a box, uh, something underneath it to bring the laptop up so the top of the laptop screen is level with seated eye height. If there is no external keyboard or mouse with the laptop, uh, you want to try and raise the monitor portion as much as possible while still allowing you to keep a neutral posture of your wrist when you're typing. You can tilt your screen by angling the laptop keypad. Uh, use a binder or other raised angled item uh, to help bring that screen height up. You can modify a box by cutting down one side or use a book and place it halfway under the laptop so that the back is elevated. If you're doing a lot of typing and putting from paper into the actual computer, you really should be using a document holder. If you have one, use it. The reason for that is when we're typing from paper that's you know, sitting on our table in front of us, we're kind of sitting here look, typing like this, that extreme rotation of the neck, looking downwards as well, then back up to the screen to make sure we're typing the information in. So if you are typing from paper and you don't have a document holder, you can make one. Uh, you know, in the first example, someone made one with uh, just using cardboard. But you can also use a binder standing on its end with a paper clip to hold your papers, uh, a magazine holder, or even a cereal box can be used. For your keyboard and mouse, if external devices are available, make sure that they're at wrist height. If not, uh, angle the keyboard of the laptop to get the best angles possible. Remembering we're trying to keep our wrists straight when we're typing. Uh, if we do find that we are using the laptop, we're sort of getting our wrists in a bent posture like this due to the height of it. Remember, one, try and keep our wrists nice and straight like in the first example. Well, we can make our own wrist rest. You can use a rolled up towel, 
a pair of socks, or even a pool noodle cut in half. That's gonna give you that space to fill in between your work surface and your wrist to help keep your wrist nice and straight so you're not gonna get that bending of the wrist. Uh, if you're taking a lot of phone calls, no, try and place the phone as close to you as possible so you're not reaching if you're using a landline to grab the receiver. Uh, try and utilize hands-free as much as possible. Try and use a headset. Uh, basically, a lot of people using a landline will kind of do this and keep working. That's what we call a gooseneck. That really compresses the nerves uh, within our neck. So we want to make sure we're keeping that neutral posture. Uh, if we're taking calls on our cell phone, uh, like the lady in the picture, having a headset plugged in helps to keep that neutral posture, lets you be able to be heard. We often know that people that just go on speaker, uh, people have trouble hearing them, so that headset's essential for being heard. And at the same time, it allows us to get up and walk. So you know, when you're doing a lot of phone calls or teleconferences, you know, getting up, standing, walking while on the conversation is really important. It gets the blood flow and the circulation going. Uh, you can also, uh, if you want to do a, a standing workstation, you can make one at home, a, a bar style counter or table may allow for this type of posture. Remember that we want to be able to keep that 90 degree angle between our upper arm and our, our lower arm. You could use an ironing board uh, because it is height adjustable or even a large box or tote placed on the table. Most importantly though, you need to take breaks, especially if we're not working in the most ideal conditions with the ideal equipment. You know, after about 20 or 30 minutes of work, get up and move around. Even if it's just for five minutes, just going and grabbing a glass of water, running to the washroom. It's just ability to get the blood flow and circulation going. Uh, the less ergonomic sound your workstation, the more movement becomes essential. If you find yourself getting caught up in your work and forgetting to take that break, set a timer. You re really need to keep the circulation going. Uh, take phone calls once again while standing or walking. Make sure you take a set coffee and lunch break as you would normally in your office. You need that mental health break. You need to be able to separate home from work. Uh, if you're utilizing a laptop with no external devices, then it can be moved easily. So you know, once again, elevate it, work, work with it standing, then sit again, et cetera. Switching up your postures. It's so important to keep moving. And the reason for that is blood brings oxygen into the muscles and takes away waste products. If we're in these static postures uh, in less than ideal conditions, we can actually reduce the amount of blood flow going into our muscles. And this is what leads to muscle fatigue and pain. So by promoting, getting up, walking, moving, we're actually forcing the blood into our muscles to stimulate healing and the removal of waste products. Now, uh, OCAL is currently offering a virtual home office ergonomics assessment. It's available to anyone in Ontario who's currently working from home and is concerned about their workstation setup or suffering from musculoskeletal pain. And this is available at no charge. The service provides an individual assessment one-on-one uh, -on -one with an OCA ergonomist and the individual person. This can be done via email, pictures or video clips, uh, or even a telephone or video conference to actually see the area that you're working at. In a focus on the use of available resources, uh, such as office equipment, furniture, household items that you have at home in order to improve your workstation setup. Uh, recommendations are made trying to keep keeping in mind the CSA office ergonomic standard. And if you're interested in this, uh, you want to try and contact one of OCAL's ergonomists for an assessment. You can reach us at ergo at ocal.on.ca. Once again, ergo at ocal.on.ca to initiate the process. If you have other issues or concerns or want to speak to an ergonomist, you can call our 1-800 number, 
0336 and I'll direct you to the clinic nearest you. That then you'll be able to get in touch with uh, one of our ergonomists. Or once again, just using the ergo at ocal.on.ca, we can forward your email, uh, inquiry, et cetera, onto the ergonomist in your area. So uh, that concludes my portion of the presentation, and I'll turn it back to Dwayne to handle some questions. Okay, thanks so much, Trevor. That's really useful information. Um, I'm sure a number of you have some great questions uh, for Dwayne. Um, while we queue these up, though, uh, we have a, a, a short poll that um, we'd like to ask you a few questions. It'll help us with future uh, webinars. Dwayne? Yep. Um, so the first question that I had come in is, is there anything else I could utilize as an external monitor if I don't have a traditional external monitor to attach to my laptop? Obviously, it's, it's the best case scenario if you do have an external monitor, um, because then you, you just attach the ex external monitor <clears throat> to your laptop and you can move it around and, and place it in the correct position. If you don't have an external monitor like that, you can utilize a television. Uh, obviously, a modern television that is equipped with an HDMI port, uh, you can simply plug your laptop into your TV um, via the HDMI port, <clears throat> and then whatever's on your laptop will go onto your TV as long as you set your TV to that correct input. By doing this, this is not the best scenario, obviously. Um, but by doing this, you'd at least have a monitor that's further away from your laptop. And then you could just utilize your laptop as your keyboard and mouse area. Um, and so for the most part, most people have uh, modern TVs. They have HDMI cables uh, because that's generally how your TV is set up. Uh, to start with, you just unplug one of those cables and plug it into your laptop. Okay, I'm just uh, reading some new uh, some new questions here. Um, do you recommend any stretches that can be done at the desk, <clears throat> and any thoughts on how to avoid computer electronic eye strain? Well, there's a lot of different stretching that you can do while you're sit sitting at your desk. Uh, if you go on our website, Ocal. <clears throat> our OCAL website, we do have a document on there that gives you uh, an example of some stretches that you can do. Um, basically, the key is, like Trevor said, is to move. And being at home and working from a home office or from a, a temporary workstation actually affords you the benefit of being able to move a little more fluidly. Um, as opposed to being in a regular office setting, being at home, you're generally free to move around and do whatever you can on your own. So like Trevor mentioned, we would recommend potentially even setting an alarm so that you're only in the seated position for a short period of time, 20 to 30 minutes. Following that time, you don't have to move and go, you know, you don't have to go for a jog or a hike or anything like that. Basically, getting up and moving for 30 seconds or 45 seconds is enough. You get up, you walk down the hallway, you walk around your living room, you do something like that. That will help with the blood flow and the movement. The specific stretches, you can, you know, do certain shoulder stretches, neck stretches, all of those types of things while you're sitting. And we recommend those, I recommend those when you're at a, a traditional office for sure. In terms of eye strain, what you want to do is you want to make sure in general you, you want your monitor to be about arm's length away. Um, because when the monitor is too far away and you have your font set too low or too small, sorry, it's sometimes difficult to see and you end up leaning in like this because you, you can't see. When you're utilizing a smaller screen, such as a laptop screen, you might want to <clears throat> increase the size of the font uh, and or make sure that your monitor is 
is a little bit closer to you so that you can see it and you don't have to move your move your head and strain your eyes as much basically it's individual to your vision if you're utilizing a little bit bigger monitor such as potentially a, a tv or an external monitor sometimes that is actually less stra strenuous on your eyes because you can make your screen larger your font those types of things will be a little bit larger as well Dwayne, also with the resources um that loretta will be sending out afterwards there is a copy of our uh, uh stretching uh app or work related stretches to do uh with the information package that will be sent off after the presentation. Yeah, okay. <clears throat> yeah, so you'll, that's basically the, the stretching document that I, I spoke of. Uh, so it'll be sent out to you so that you can, you can view that as well. If you have specific questions on that, don't hesitate. Send an email to ocal or ergo.ocal.ca. Ergo is a brand new email ergo at ocal.on.ca and one of the ergonomists will definitely get back to you with specifics of what you uh, what you need okay uh next question suffering from lower back pain using a dining room it left me here using a dining room table and office chair that is adjustable any suggestions i'm elevating my feet on a low stool <clears throat> well the main thing that if you have an adjustable, this says you have an adjustable chair, you have an adjustable chair, make sure that you've adjusted it to the correct positioning for yourself. As Trevor said earlier in the presentation, basically what you want to look at is you want to try to keep your joint angles around 90 degrees. What I mean by that is your ankles, your knees and your hips all around 90 degrees. So oftentimes, if you're suffering from back pain and you do have an adjustable chair, it's often too high for you. So it's too high and then you generally have your feet kind of in a dangle position, which puts strain on your lower back because it changes the position of your pelvis. It says uh, you're elevating your feet on a low stool. That's good. Uh, but again, take a look at the positioning. It's almost as bad if your knees are too high. You don't want your knees to be a lot higher than your hips as well. You would like your knees to be even with your hips. So if you have an adjustable chair, it may be adjusted correctly. And by utilizing the stool, you may be actually elevating your knees too high, which is potentially putting pressure on your lower back as well. Again, though, the main thing that you need to do to potentially alleviate the back pain is get up and move. You really have to be diligent, especially at home, to try to get up and do some movement every 20, 25, 30 minutes. Okay, I've got questions coming left, right, and center here. Um, How many cumulative hours is acceptable on a computer with brief breaks? That's a tough question. It, uh, it, it, uh, it's individual as well. Um, you know, an, a normal work day is six, six and a half hours, seven hours of work. Um, what's acceptable is dependent upon your situation primarily. It depends a lot upon your ergonomic setup. It depends a lot upon what you're doing, doing during those breaks. And it also depends upon your own personal injury profile, whether you have chronic hip problems or chronic knee problems or chronic back, neck, shoulder, wrist problems, those types of things. I hesitate to put an actual number on it because it's so individualized. I would suggest to make sure that you have those ample breaks. Um, every hour or so, you should take a longer break. Like I've mentioned, a, a micro break of you know 20, 30 seconds every 20 to 30 minutes 
every hour to hour and 20 minutes, you should try to have a, a five minute postural break, uh, meaning stand up, move around a little bit more. If you have the ability to change from a sitting position to a standing position, that is a good time to do so. As Trevor mentioned in the presentation, if you have a laptop and you're strictly utilizing a laptop, there's no reason why you can't move that laptop around with you. What I mean by that is you, you can sit and do some, some work from the laptop at, a, at your kitchen table or your desk or wherever you're, you're, you're doing your seated work, and then you can move. You can take that and then maybe bring it up to a countertop so that you're working on it from a standing position. So again, I, I, I realize I haven't answered this question probably the way that the, the person that asked it is looking for an answer because there is no hard and fast answer to that. If you find that you are getting a lot of aches and pains and you're finding that at the end of a work day, you're having back issues, you're having sore neck, sore wrists, elbows, those types of things, then you really need to take a look at your own work habits. And you need to take a look at your ergonomics, obviously, but you need to take a look at how long you're working and what types of breaks that you're having. Now, working from home again or using a temporary workstation affords you the ability to be potentially a little more flexible dependent upon your work tasks and and, and what your job is. So you can potentially break those up over time just a little bit better. Okay. Uh, what is an ideal chair? One with wheels and can rotate or a fixed base? Well, the ideal chair would be a fully adjustable office chair, right? which basically most fully adjustable office chairs have wheels and can rotate. You want to make sure that the chair, if possible, is as adjustable as possible. At least you want to make sure that you have height adjustability, you have backrest adjustability, and if, you, if it does have armrests, that you have armrest adjustability so that you can make sure that it's at the correct height for you so that you can bring yourself into those 90 degree angles. You also want to make sure that the seat pan is, is of an adequate size. It's not too large for you so that you're sitting in a correct position and so that you're, the back of your knees are a few inches away from the edge of the seat pan. So I guess the answer to your question is generally one with wheels and that that rotates is generally a little bit better because those are standard types of things that you'll find on fully adjustable office chairs. Now, again, like Trevor said at the beginning of the presentation, you might not have that at home. So you need to try to find at home, go through a number of chairs within your household to see which ones tend to fit you best. I mean, if your chair is fixed and it doesn't have wheels, the major negative with that is it's difficult to bring it forward and backward, right? It's difficult to go left and right. You're basically standing up, pushing it in and pushing it out. When you don't have that movement ability within a chair, people tend not to move, right? They, they sit themselves down, they sit in that position and then they, they stay there. So if it's possible to have a, a chair that is movable, that's obviously going to be a lot better for you. Okay, well, I've gotten the, uh, I've, I've gotten the notification, time's up, wrap it up when you can. Okay. So, so basically, what I'm, there are several questions left here. Um, if you would like to email the questions, Trevor, if you can bring it back down to the to the, the second last slide. If you'd like to email the questions, any other questions that I didn't get to, to that email, ergo at ocal.on.ca, somebody will get back to you. I can get back to you and in, 
and answer your individual questions. Um, and, and hopefully we can, can get all of your situations rectified. Yes, Dwayne, we'll also, the questions that have been submitted um, online um, and through this webinar, uh, we have, for those who have registered for the webinar, we have your email address, we have your questions. We will be forwarding them to Dwayne uh, so that he can answer them. We're also going to roll them up into a document and we'll post all of the questions and answers uh, for this webinar to our website. Um, we will also, uh, Trevor mentioned uh, resources. So following this, this webinar, we'll send an email to all those who participated with some links uh, to various uh, resources on both our websites uh, and our social media platforms. Um, yeah, so uh, I think that's about all the time we have today. If you haven't already, please sign up for the next webinar, which um, we are gonna be dealing with uh, respiratory protection for workers, um, their place in a COVID-19 protection plan. Thanks so much, take good care, and hopefully we'll see you Thursday. Bye.